Um, so I see it is afternoon now. I want to put something on the board here, and it's something, it's a, a phrase that you've probably heard. Simply the best. It could be a slogan for advertising a, a, a car or a new product. But actually, I remember it was sung by Tina Turner in the 60s. And uh, simply the best. And uh, there was a guy called Chris Eubank, who was a super middleweight boxer. And this was the song or the music he always had blaring out when he jumped into the boxing ring because he was, in his day, simply the best middleweight boxer in the world. So he deserved the title as long as he had it. But if I was to ask you today, not who's the best boxer or who even who's the best sportsman, who do you think is the best? the best person who ever lived? Well, I suppose you get different answers. Our Mother Teresa did a terrific job um, helping the poor in Calcutta. Uh, do you think you're the best person? I'm not sure. Um, but um, she wouldn't, if she was alive today, she wouldn't say she was the best person in the world. And then there's Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela who did a terrific job um, helping uh, marginalized people uh, at their day. Then there's people who pioneered tremendous advances in uh, medicine, in uh, technology, um, you know, heart transplants, first man on the moon, all that. I certainly would never clue about things like that, but there are people who are especially gifted in technology and better work out these things and, and carry them into practice. So these people have made an impact in society, and that there's absolutely no doubt. But there's one person that strikes me who's way above all these other people. Yes, they made a contribution, but this person has made such a contribution that all the others pale into insignificance. This person never did anything wrong, and yet he wasn't proud. This person always commanded an audience. People said from all sorts of different backgrounds, no one ever spoke like this man. This man gave sight to the blind. This man healed the sick. This man caused deaf people to hear. This person said to love your enemies. How about that? Not put up with them, but love them. One of this man's closest followers said he committed no sin. No deceit was found in his mouth. Now, if you were to ask my wife and my closest friends, has this guy ever sinned? Has he ever done wrong? Oh, yes. Oh, I can tell you this and this and this. And if I was to ask your closest circle of friends, they would tell you me about the wrong things that you've done. But Jesus of Nazareth never sinned. And that's why he qualified to be the best person who ever lived. So we thought about the best person who ever lived, but what about this? Now this is a lot sung about in pop songs, isn't it? It was the Beatles that sang, wasn't it? I don't care too much for money. Money can't buy me love, although I noticed they had plenty of money when they made that song. But what has been the greatest love demonstrated? Well, no doubt many people have laid down their lives in two world wars so that their country can be a safer, more secure one for future generations. Some people, um, parents have, have gone to tremendous uh, lengths to uh, safeguard, even save the life of one of their youngsters. And so there have been great demonstrations of love through history, and we should commend them. And sometimes people have been awarded medals because of their selfless love. But again, when we come to Jesus, he's head and shoulders above all these other people. Because 
The Bible says, greater love has no man than this, than a man lays down his life for his friends. God commends his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Some people would die for people that were good. Some people would die for their own countrymen. But Jesus died on the cross for people who were rebelling against him, who were living a life completely opposite to the way God intended them to live. But that is real love. So we thought of the best person who ever lived, demonstrating the greatest love that the world has ever seen. But what about this? What is the greatest, the best event in history? Well, some some of you ladies may cast your minds back to 2022 when the, the, our women won the uh, Euro World Cup. That was great. We, we can go back to D-Day, perhaps. We can go back to all sorts of uh, amazing events. But the greatest event was this. Well, before I say that, what's the worst event for most people? Well, it must be death, mustn't it? And we don't even like using the word sometimes in Britain. We say he's no longer with us, he's passed on. Uh, but death is a reality, one in one people die. But this man, Jesus, conquered death. Not only did he die on the cross to pay the punishment for your sin and mine, but he told people, not once, but many times, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day, be raised to life. Jesus was physically raised on the third day. And he showed himself not just to one person, but to a number of people. In fact, at one time, it was a group of 500 at one time. And they could testify that they had physically seen the risen Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you may attend a funeral and some guy in clerical garb walks down and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet he shall live. Jesus told those words to people that if they trusted in him and asked him God to forgive their sins and trust in him, they too would have eternal life. Oh yes, we'll die physically, but after death comes eternal life. So we've got the greatest person who ever lived demonstrating the greatest love by dying on the cross in the place of sinners. A greatest event was that Jesus bodily rose again from the dead, exactly as he predicted. But now we come to this. What is the best offer? that you could ever have. Well, there may be some bargains up and down the high street here in Pickering today, and if there are, I hope you manage to get a few. But that, that is nothing compared to the offer that God offers. God offers sinful, selfish people the gift of eternal life. That means life beyond the grave. When we die, we have a guarantee of heaven instead of hell when we die. Sorry. Not because we're good, but because God accepts us on the basis of Jesus' goodness, Jesus' righteousness. And if you've trusted in him, or if you will trust in him, that offer includes you. It doesn't include everyone. It only includes those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus made it very clear, whoever believes on the Son has eternal life. No ifs, no buts. But whoever does not obey the Son will not see life the wrath of God rests on him. So which side of the cross are you? Are you on the Jesus side, God's side, or are you on your own side? Oh, I do trust today in Pickering that you will trust in the Lord Jesus. Ask him to come and be the boss of your life. If you trust him, you'll never, ever regret that. Thank you for listening.